Hey guys, uh, we're here with Nathan Martin from Mobile Mortgage Advice, so let's talk finance. Nathan. Laz. Hey, welcome to the office. Thanks, mate. It's obviously an exciting week. Uh, of, uh, all through the news, it's all talk about interest rates, our second rate rise, 50 mm -hmm. basis points. Uh, for those watching, um, you know, everyone's concerned about, I guess, between now and Christmas, are we likely to hit that 2% mark for the cash rate? Uh, it's a great question. Um, based on the predictions from most of the economists, there yep. are suggesting there's going to be further rate increases. Okay. So it could be likely we may hit that um, mark. So at 2% for most mortgages, banks put their, um, their fee on top. Um, what are we looking at as far as a variable rate, you think? So at the moment, because the cash rate is 0.85%, and at the moment you can get some variable rates you know, in the low 2.5, 2.3% okay. uh, uh, with the discounts that the banks are offering. So if there are further increases, um, those variable rates are going to be likely to be, you know, in the 4% okay. and 5% mark. So talk about fixed rates, if, you know, I've got a mortgage, a couple of mortgages at Henley, um, uh, the wife and I go, let's, let's maybe fix half of it. Mm -hmm. What's the current for, say, a three year or four year? Yeah, I would be recommending more of a four or five year rate, okay. depending on the client's goals. Everyone's goals are different, um, but you really need to be having a conversation with your banker or broker. But for me, talking with my clients, um, the four year rates in the low um, to high fours. Okay. Um, and then, you know, with some of the fixed rates for three years, you're looking at, you know, in the mid fours. Okay. Yeah, so over the last six months, we've seen the fixed rates increase um, quite often. Yeah. And I remember, you know, we spoke um, late last year in December and I was recommending mm. for people to sit down with a banker and broker and have a, have a chat yeah. um, and look at what's the best option for you uh, and prepare yourself for okay. potential increases in the future. Uh, so if Jazz and I were looking at uh, fixing our home loan in Henley Beach, uh, let's say we want to fix half of it, we're going to be there for the next 10 years. Um, fixing for maybe four years, what's the best rates out there and who should we look at? Yeah, look, um, to give you a bit of an idea, just last week ANZ increased their fixed rates. Okay. Uh, one of the ba other banks that haven't yet is Bank SA. Right. So Bank SA are offering um, rates in the, in the um, high fours, still okay. for the four year fixed, four years, which right. is a pretty decent offering. Um, there are other options as well. Um, however, one of the questions I would be asking you would be how much do you think you could pay off your loan um, in the next four to five years? And then, you know, we would look at how much, um, you know, you could pay towards the variable and the fixed just to make sure, because there are limits to how much extra you can pay off on the fixed rate loans. Okay. Yeah. So Nathan, uh, for fixing a, your home loan, what's the positives and negatives? pros and cons? Yeah, look, uh, one of the um, positives is that uh, it will give you peace of mind yep. knowing that your repayments won't change for that fixed period. So if you want to know, you know, over the next five years, if you decide to fix for five years, that your payments won't change yep. and it's not going to affect your um, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, obviously with the variable rates, they can change and mm -hmm. we have seen two increases in the last two months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, over the next six months and moving forward, it's likely to increase more. Okay. So yeah, peace of mind is, is certainly a positive. And it, you know, if we go to sell the property, um, you know, or we should change banks, so what happens with the fix, fixed loan? Well, because the rates are increasing, um, let's say you decided to fix today, mm -hmm. and because the rates are going up further, you, you're likely to not see any um, break costs. Yeah. However, if rates start to drop further, then that's when you would start to see okay. uh, a break cost occur. So we go back to Melbourne Cup a few years ago where we saw that big 1% drop, you know, 100 basis points. Um, I actually had a fixed rate loan, which we paid out, I think it was a Friday before that, Tuesday. Um, we paid 8,500 for break cost, but yeah, I think on the Wednesday we got a new quote, it was 38,000, so yeah, there was a lot in that situation. But, oh, but the yeah. other way around, obviously, yeah, if, if rates start to go up yeah. after you've fixed, mm -hmm. let's say you fixed at 4% and then rates went up to 5%, then you're not going to have any break costs. And I guess speculation, they're not likely to come down, they're going up. Potentially, yeah. <laughs> you just never know. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things with rates, you really need to just be in uh, constant communication yeah. uh, with your banker or broker and just get the best advice specific to your needs. So Laz, look, the tables have turned. I'd love to ask you a question. Oh, okay. Um, 
So the Sydney and Melbourne markets, we've heard that are starting to cool off a little bit, but Adelaide's mm. still heading heading up. So what are your thoughts on that? What have yeah. you been seeing? I spoke to a Sydney agent the other day and they've seen about 10% come off. Um, and obviously media are saying that Adelaide's going to do the same, but uh, you know, Sydney, Melbourne are much larger markets and higher volume and have always fluctuated, whereas Adelaide's a more tightly held, more conservative state. Um, we have a lot less properties in the market and yeah, the typical thing we hear from a lot of our clients is we can't find anything yet, so we're not going to sell until we buy. Mm. Um, and we're actually selling probably 40% properties off market now, mm. but we used to years ago sell so only maybe 10%. So it's a lot tighter um, held and very conservative lower volume of stock, so um, we're more conservative and we're not likely to see that sort of fluctuation. Mm. Um, but yeah, at the moment, um, what we are seeing is a lot of buyers now, instead of you know, going in the uncertainty of maybe building for the next 18 months or two years, mm -hmm. uh, the, the rate rise we've seen, a lot of stimulation to go, let's just buy now, let's lock in our interest mm -hmm. rate, let's enjoy life today. And, mm -hmm. you know, after what we've been through with COVID the last two years, I think that's what you know, most people just want to have that lifestyle and mm -hmm. you know, make the move and, and it's brought the plans forward. Mm. And what would be one of your recommendations for people who are out there shopping and looking to buy? I know for me personally, I've got a lot of clients mm. who are actively looking. What would mm. your advice be to people that are looking and maybe missing out on that property that they yeah. love? Yeah, well, I mean, we've sold a couple this week that weren't advertising realestate.com, they've gone to our client base. So, um, you know, get in touch with your local agent, you know, whoever, whoever's the most active in the area. They could be selling a lot of homes not uh, before realestate.com. So, uh, to get in touch with your local expert or local agent, um, because it could be a property that suits or, or cross matches mm. of the market, so, yeah. which we're seeing a lot higher volume. Mm. So yeah, my suggestion to my clients is tell your agents, uh, or tell the agents what you're looking for. So, mm. you know, yeah. you never know, they may have a property that meets your requirements and can give you a call. Yeah, cool. So. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions for Nathan or myself, feel free to put them in the comments below or get in touch with our numbers. Till then, see you soon. Thank you.